Well, folks, um, season four of Bruh has come to a close as of this morning. BET Plus dropped the final two episodes earlier today. I watched them around 5, 30, 6 o'clock, and it was a pretty solid pair of episodes. And I hesitate to say it was a solid ending to the show because it really wasn't. I mean, the episodes um, set up a lot of things. This definitely felt like a mid-season finale rather than a season finale. And well, to be blunt, series finale. At the time of the recording of this video, it's August 15th, 2024. I have no idea if Bruh is coming back in any way, shape, or form. These 10 episodes were filmed way back in late 2022. The show was shelved for well over a year. I don't know between, uh, I guess, you know, uh, the contract expiration and renegotiations between Viacom and Tyler Perry. Um, the BET auction and of course the writer actor strikes maybe that has something to do with it but for whatever reason the show was shelved for quite a long time and I don't believe the show is coming back like I said I could be wrong because remember I'm just speculating here I don't know what's up I have no idea how well the show does or you know if it's underwhelming in terms of the numbers because for the most part, BET Plus doesn't really release the stats um, for their shows and movies, at least not the ones I follow. So I couldn't tell you if um, Bruh Seasons 1 through 3 did well enough to warrant future seasons. But I'm willing to bet Season 3 probably didn't do so well. And that's why even though Season 4 was created, the season was... Uh, you know, chopped down to 10 episodes. Uh, from what I learned, there were originally supposed to be more than 10 episodes, but they opted to whittle it down for one reason or another. And because of that, we didn't get a complete story, but I can say that despite season four, not truly being a complete season, it was a hell of a watch. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, I only have maybe one or two slight critiques, but other than that, if you've been watching all of my reviews, which if you haven't, go ahead and do it. I got 10 episode reviews for this entire season, so go watch them. I truly enjoyed it. Um, my bias for Rain and her fine ass aside, I did enjoy what I saw. One of my complaints is we needed more Mike. I think that if the season was longer based on episode 10, we would have gotten more Mike. But in universe, it's like, okay, yeah, he's in rehab for two months and, you know, some time has passed between seasons three and four. But the thing was, I thought that pe for the second season in a row, I think the writers, well, in season one through three, it was all Tyler. Season four, we got new writers who did a heck of a job with the entire season. Pam was done so dirty because she was presented in a way where it's like, I get why she's not telling Mike about the other guy she's dating and falling for because she's afraid he'll collapse, you know, in terms of the rehab program, maybe even relapse, you know, do drugs and whatnot again. But I think that Pam was using herself in a way where even though Mike wasn't using drugs, she was the next in line to be an addiction, you know, blowing up her phone, constantly wanting to, you know, hear updates from her and stuff like that. Basically, you know, instead of a smoke or a drink, he was getting, you know, some of that Pam. But the thing is, not in the way he hoped for, because early in the season, Pam's telling Regina, like, you know what? I'm not even really having sex with him. I'm telling him I'm too tired and whatnot, because emotionally, there's nothing left in the tank. And you really can't blame the woman, especially after what went down in season three, uh, especially the way Mike was just a complete asshole to her in the finale. But um, it's just one of those things where, she definitely should have told Mike sooner because now the dude is just fresh out of rehab, has a new, you know, outlook on life. He's ready to be a one woman man. It really reminds me of when Will got shot in the Fresh Prince and after he got out of the hospital, he proposed to Lisa and it felt like, yeah, it's a knee jerk reaction because life is short. And we saw how that turned out when they went to the altar um, in season five, I believe. 
now with uh mike you can tell like look i got a good woman let me lock it down she's the best person or the best thing that ever happened to me which is you know a, le- a legit you know thought process considering that she held him down at his lowest but the thing is <sighs> she was doing you dirty i mean what was it last week when she was on a date with a guy took the phone call it was from mike and then lied about oh i'm not i'm I'm out with a client and then when she went back to her date oh that, that was one of my clients on the phone i'm like damn pan you moving it's, it, you know it's crazy to me how she's determined to you know sabotage bill and regina for bill doing foul yet she's doing foul stuff to mike behind his back man so yeah this season definitely could have used more mike and you know um in conjunction with the Pam stuff. But yeah, that, that was probably my major critique of the season. Everything else, holy crap. Miss Alice, I, I love that they toned her down a lot. And I I sure as heck would love to know how she just met this pastor. But kind of like with Karen and sisters dating Aaron in season two, you have one of these, you know, silver tongued, blunt women hooking up with a man of the word or man of the cloth. And all of a sudden they have a new lease on life. So I love the fact that Miss Alice toned down. She's still funny, but it's just like, I feel like this was the best written Miss Alice we've seen thus far. I mean, I think one of the sweetest moments was in, uh, episode three or four. It was one of those episodes where she actually, gave john some reassurance like you know you remind me of your uncle you know who had like a business sense and whatnot i I just love for once she gave her son some positive reinforcement uh it was good to see laura back again we haven't seen her since season one you know the extra hands at the uh, sandwich shop still hitting on john um too bad we'll never know whether or not she and john got busy when they went back to his place to sign those up papers for blessing incorporated i want to say that oh blame it on the alcohol because they were doing double shots but they actually left to go back to his place before the shots came over so i don't know maybe she comes on to him but i don't know exactly how that's going to play out exactly and also never date your co-workers especially one of them is your boss it's never going to turn out well and speaking of john i love that he was actually given something good to do this season where it wasn't just him chasing after a woman it was him trying to better himself even though everybody called out the pyramid scheme it's the fact that john and what miss alice said it's the fact that john is truly applying himself to something and i love it i mean think about season one the whole thing was him wanting the bros to you know invest tens of thousands of dollars into this club And it's like, yo, we put up the money so you can get this sandwich shop and you're barely, you know, able to pay us back from that, like $50 a month. And there's no need of us putting money into you getting some club. And then what if that flops? I mean, what are you supposed to do with that? So then you move into the other seasons where he's always like, you know, oh, I need to, I'm going to get myself a, you know, my own place and move out from my mom's house and, and this, that, and the third. But this is the first season where we truly see John applying himself. And um, Lydia only had the one scene in episode one, but I do like that her character was brought back. They could have easily just swept her under the rug, but the one scene she had with John set up his arc for the entire season. It's like when you have something in front of you, you don't know how to handle it. It's like, you know, you don't know how to take advantage of a situation when it's in front of you and you're not really prepared. But so when it comes to Blessings Inc., he's willing to learn. He's ready. He's willing to apply himself and uh, get his hands dirty. So I have to applaud him for that. And Rain, if you saw my episode reviews where she's in there, good Lord, fine as hell. But I just love the acting from um, Selena because as someone who studied communications and advertising and, you know, wow, there goes three screws from my computer chair. I need to fix that. So basically, um, yeah, I just love the acting on her. I'm not going to just gush over her because I've done that in my episode reviews. Too bad she was only in the two episodes, but good Lord, the two episodes she was in, she made quite the impression. But I am curious to know if um, John does kind of climb the ranks. I mean, you know, um, he said, uh, Natalie said she would try some of his product. And if she actually liked it, she'd allow him to do a couple of meetings at the yoga studio. But, you know, it's sad. I mean, because Rain is like, you know, business, no pleasure, never mix the two. So I wonder if, 
John quote unquote unlocks the potential that she saw in him when she waived the fee to have him join her team. I wonder if she'll look at him a bit differently in that, you know what, maybe it's been too much business and now it's time to add some pleasure. So I thought that would be cool. Now, when it comes to, let's see, I've talked about Mike. I've talked about Miss Alice, talked about Laura. I've talked about John. I guess the last two characters to talk about, yeah, this video won't be long. Like I said, it's only 10 episodes, uh, are Bill and Tom. And strangely enough, their storylines kind of intersect this season uh, ever so slightly. It's just the fact that Bill and Claudia were a thing last season. And then the Claudia thing kind of rolls into Tom's storyline more than anything else. Yes, I know about Greg and Darla. I'll talk about them a little bit later. But when it comes down to it, Bill has not learned his lesson. You know, he's still a dog. And you would think the Claudia situation uh, would have calmed her down. It's like, you know what? Yeah, uh, uh, the crazy husband is out there trying to kill me or trying to find me. He's going to kill me. So I better try to, you know, do right by my wife. But instead, he's hooking up with Natalie, which honestly, I can't really blame him. Natalie's fine as hell, too. But um, it's just one of those things where, bro, Bill, come on, man. You should know better. I don't feel bad for you. And everybody in the finale is like, bro, you're a sex addict. Just admit it. So essentially, what I liked about Bill early in the season was he was actually showing remorse. Yeah, I screwed up and I don't want to put my wife and future kids in danger. So I need to act right, maybe even split town if necessary, because they can't pay for my mistakes. And yet he goes right back to lying, doing sneaky things behind Regina's back. And well, there you go. And oh yeah, Miss uh, Hilda actually shows up again. I thought that was good. It was cool to see her. And she rightfully does not trust Bill because, well, he's a cheater. And turns out that uh, she was right about, you know, her suspicions about him. So the thing is, you know, Regina's scared because she's pregnant. And she's like, look, you know what? We don't even have to be together. You just say it. you don't want to be together. But, you know, obviously um, he'll still do right by their kid or children because she's having twins which I feel like is a lazy rinse and repeat of the sister storyline with Karen, except this time around, I guess Regina is not pregnant by two different men. I don't know. Hmm. But yeah, Bill seemed to be doing good, you know, cooking for Regina, you know, spending romantic evenings together, going to dinner, but nope, he's going to the yoga studio to get it on with Natalie. And she's about to sabotage things by dumping her panties in his gym bag. <laughs> that was messed up. So yeah, Bill is uh Bill just hasn't changed a bit. Now we go over to Tom, who I think debatable. Okay, I think John had the best storyline in the sense of him actually growing as a character. Tom is kind of getting an expansion of the storyline he was getting at the end of season one, essentially going above and beyond for a patient who's in an abusive situation with their husband. And he's facing the challenges of his superiors in his um, job getting in his way because it was the police officer's wife in late season one, but this time around it's Claudia. So I feel like I'll give John the award for most, um, improved storyline in terms of taking a character who is really mostly there just for comedic value, but actually doing something with him this season. And Tom, I'll say he had, yeah, I think Tom, the, the, the Claudia thing, this was the most engaging storyline of the season. Yeah. I, I think that's what I'll say about that. Like his boss, the chief physician offers the position to Tom, but it's like, look, you know, just so you know, this job is very demanding. Um, it's very unlikely that it's, that you could sustain a family, like, you know, get married, have kids and whatnot, because this job just demands so much for whoever takes on the position and puts on the coat. And Tom, you know, thinks about it the entire season. So then we get to the finale where, you know, his superior is like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go to the board tomorrow, say I'm retiring and highly recommend you because of him going above and beyond for Claudia. So essentially... I don't know. I mean, on the one hand, it's like, yeah, in real life, there's a lot of red tape when it comes to situations like Claudia is dealing with, you know, uh, the fact that the husband, Jack, beat the crap out of her. Then on top of that, she's in the hospital for a while and she needs to be under protection because one of Jack's goons masquerades as like, you know, a janitor or something. 
and is uh, trying to find out, okay, what room is she in? Who's guarding the door? When's the best time I can go in there to take her out? I think, you know, last week was pretty wild where you had that old lady who was paid off by Jack to fate having like a heart attack or stroke or whatever. So everybody's attention's on her. So when the dude goes into the room, he can attempt to smother Claudia. So even before that, you had the dead rat on the plate. So that was pretty wild. But, you know, Tom was just like, look, folks, can you not see what's going on here? This woman's in danger. Yeah, well, it's like everybody who said they can help out. It's like Claudia just needs to say something. I mean, because if she doesn't, we can't do anything. That makes sense. But even after she finally speaks up, it's like, yeah, well, actually... We really can't do anything because of X, Y, and Z. We have to wait. And it's like, but they know where she is. Because initially, I'm like, just move her to a different room. But then I'm like, oh, yeah, because if there's a cop outside, that's going to be a dead giveaway to whoever is in the hospital looking for her that that's where she is. So Tom scoops her up and brings her to his house. And then the finale is pretty wild because Darla and Greg find out. And then it's this huge thing about ethics the oaths they've all taken for their respective jobs and if saving Claudia is worth it because, you know, it's going way too above and beyond and now they put their own employment and their lives in danger. So it's a lot of ethical, you know, um, debates that could be had about this storyline, which I feel makes for one hell of a story. So again, the writers did a good job there. And to round things out, uh, talking about Greg and Darla, um, I think their best episode was episode eight after Darla saved Claudia from getting smothered and Greg invites her over so they can talk. But the thing is, it's more of the same. I mean, if, if Greg is like uncomfortable dating a trans person versus Darla, who is like, I thought we we're just going to be friends. And, you know, because early in the season, she's like, wait, friends don't kiss like that. And like, I thought you said you wanted to be friends that you're doing all this. So it's, it's hard to really follow the storyline because one episode, things are good. The next episode, one of them oversteps boundaries, whether it's Greg being too, you know, uh, touchy feely on Darla and obviously doing things that regular friends with zero benefits would do. Then you have Darla who, you know, when Greg's like, hey, I had a trans patient. I thought that was a good scene, too, when um Greg is treating a, a, a trans couple. Or actually, he's interacting with a trans couple on the job, and one of them is his patient. And, you know, he just asked about, like, this reminded me of the haves and the have-nots when David asked Landon about life as a gay man because he had just, you know, Jeffrey came out to his parents. So it's like, okay, so he, you could tell David was trying to comprehend what was going on and, you know, I, I guess how to adjust and understand Jeffrey's lifestyle. So it felt like a similar thing was being done here where Greg was like, so, so is it tough for you all being, you know, a trans couple? Like, what, what's up with that? And, you know, I thought that was uh, interesting how, you know, that kind of played into Greg. Then telling Darla, I don't care what people think. I'll, we'll go out on a date at some point. And the thing is, Darla took it upon herself to just pop up at his job with the lunch and whatnot. And then she got in her feelings because Greg was like distracted. And so it's kind of a, it's kind of weird because he was caught off guard, obviously, but it's hard to tell if he was distracted because he was on the clock and, you know, a doctor always has to look at their phone and whatnot versus, okay, um, I don't, I know I said I wanted to go out, but this is just like not what I was hoping. I mean, I wanted it to kind of be done on my terms as opposed to you just popping up. So neither one of them truly respect the other's boundaries, even after the boundaries were set. So yeah, I, I'm really not sure what to make of these two, to be completely honest. Like, the, every now and again, they'll have a good scene, but then it kind of gets undercut because one of them doesn't really, they, they, they don't play their role. They don't really respect what the other one has to say in terms of their boundaries and how comfortable they are at something. So, because sometimes, you know, Darla's like, yeah, we're just friends, but then other times, like, she's overly flirtatious to the point of, damn, you're giving Greg the bedroom eyes right now. I'm like, well, what's going on here? So, other characters introduced, like um, Bill's college basketball coach, Loved um, Braxton from Jamie Foxx show. I thought he gave Bill exactly what he needed in terms of a push in the right direction. However, despite how good that scene was early in the season, 
it literally meant nothing because Bill is still doing his thing with Natalie on the side. So that kind of sucks. But yeah. Um, so I believe that's it. I, I think aside from maybe a six here and there, I, I gave this episode some pretty solid scores. Um, nines and eights and sevens. But I would rewatch these 10 episodes any day of the week over Sister Season 7. These new writers came aboard. They knew what the assignment was and they did it. Sister Season 7, I wish I could say the same, but no. These writers clearly had some understanding of these characters from the first three seasons. And for the most part, aside from Pam, they did a great job taking these characters to the next level, really feeling like they developed them, wrote compelling storylines, and it truly would be a damn shame if this was the end of the series, but what a way to go out on. I mean, think of it this way. Seasons one and two, it's kind of a toss-up of which one I think is better. I think season one, while it had great ideas, it's just one of those things where I hated that season two started by dumping like Valerie, uh, Charlie, potential love interests for um, John and um, Tom. And then the whole storyline of the abused woman that just completely got shafted. Season two was interesting. Yeah, it was. But then you get to season three where I just felt like easily the worst season. But season four with only 10 episodes, it, it shot to the top of the list. I mean, I dare say that Bruh season four is up there for me, like Zatima season one or the haves and the have not season one. Very solid. So I highly recommend it. Um, so without further ado, to kind of close things out, if this is indeed the final Bruh piece of media that comes out, uh, thanks to the cast, I think that this was probably one of the most interactive cast I've ever talked with. And I'm not just saying that lightly. I honestly think that I've been in contact with the cast of this show since the beginning. Um, yeah, I I've talked with pretty much everybody. Yeah, yeah, I have. I have. When I think about Alice, Pam, Regina, the bros. Yeah, I I've talked with all of them. And I think that it's a shame the show never got its... Uh, just do. I think that, you know, when you look at it, it was originally a spinoff of Sisters because Andy and Bellamy were in season one. Andy was like in three or four episodes. Bellamy made a one-off appearance over at Mike's place to remind Andy and Mike of the importance of the case they're working on. And then as we go into season two onward, it kind of became its own show. Uh, one of the actors told me that yeah, it was a spinoff, but then Tyler opted to just have the show go in its own direction. And unfortunately, it was like the redheaded stepchild of the group or middle child of the group. It just never got its just due. I think the most offensive thing about how BET or Tyler Perry Studios or whoever did Bruh, Bruh is the only Tyler Perry show from the Viacom era that did not get its own social media page. I am not lying. Sisters, bro, uh, sisters, a sister living house of pain, the oval roofless. Um, I'm probably missing one because I'm just talking too fast. Okay, sisters. Well, actually, I don't think Zatima. Well, Zatima, Zatima doesn't need his own page. The hype, the hype is real for that. But the fact that um, the fact that Bruh doesn't have an Instagram page, a Twitter page, a Facebook page. It's very telling what the, I guess the, what the powers that be thought of this show. I remember a time where I, I think it was season two and I said, bruh is better than sisters. I, I forgot what season of sisters was out at the time, probably like season three or four. And I'm like, I started a kind of a bit of an online war. I remember a uh, media traffic or there was some website that did an article based on my tweet because I literally caused a bit of an uproar online because I'm like, at the time, bruh, writing was actually better than sisters. But, um, yeah, folks, I, <sighs> it's a shame. But, hey, um, some of the actors have been doing other things, so congrats to them. I just wish them the best. Of course, we know that 
Uh, Monty, Bill is on Sisters now as Rich. No, they are not the same character. I know uh, Mike, he was in, um, what was it? First Kill, wasn't that like a Netflix series or something? And I know that John was on America's Got Talent, I believe. Tom was in She-Hulk and kind of the list goes on from there, but I just wish them the best. Um, to be completely honest, I would much rather see a bruh season four B or at least a season five to wrap things up. I would rather see new episodes of bruh with this writing team than a caught up season two or Michael Blackson show season two. Hell, even more than Sister Season 8. Not the team of Season 3, though. I want to see how the team of Season 3 is, but that's really all I have. Um, Too bad I don't have much to show for bruh reviews in terms of the content. I, I feel like I'm the only person on the internet that ever gave this show a, you know, a shot. I don't think, I mean, aside from people who might do like, um, you know, reels or just short videos doing recaps, I think I'm the only person that actively review the show from top to bottom yeah during late season three i really didn't review the show but i did do a mega video where i reviewed like all the shows episodes i didn't watch i did binge them and did one video but yeah everything is here so if you are interested in bruh maybe you haven't checked it out yet maybe you plan on doing it in the future check my bruh playlist all my videos are there again thanks to the uh cast Sorry, um, things didn't go further. It's just a damn shame. But like I said, at least y'all went out on a high note. And that's really all I have to say. So um, like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.